Hey everybody. Today we're talking about mean, median, and mode, focusing on their interpretations. These are all ways of measuring the center of a data set, and each one is useful in its own way. Let's run through the definitions really quickly. The mean is just the numerical average. So you add up all the values in the set, and you divide by the number of values. The median is the value that splits the data exactly in half. In particular, you should arrange your data from lowest to highest. If you have an odd number of values, the median is exactly the one in the middle. If there's an even number of values, so you have two values in the middle, you should split their difference. You can take their average, go halfway between them. Finally, the mode is just the most common value in your set. Um, a distribution can have more than one mode. For example, if you have two values that have the same frequency more than any other in the set, but if all the data has the same frequency, then we're going to say the distribution has no mode. Here's an example. I have a data set with 16 values in it. The mean is going to be the sum of all those values divided by 16. Here, 67.9375. Notice the notation, x bar, x with a line over it. This is common notation for the mean of a sample. The median is going to be 65.5. We have uh, an even number of values in this set, so we take the two in the middle, 65 and 66, and go halfway between them. Take their average, 65.5. The capital M is pretty typical notation for a median of a sample. Finally, the mode is 65, the most common value in this set. Each measure of center has a graphical interpretation in particular when we look at a histogram. The mode is going to be the highest point on the histogram. The median is going to be the value that splits the histogram in half. And the mean is going to be the value that um, would allow the histogram to balance. Let's do an example to see um, what I'm talking about. So here's a histogram. The mode is going to be the x value where the histogram is tallest. So that's right around 3 in this case, maybe a tiny bit bigger than 3. The median is going to be the value that splits the histogram's area in half. So here I've drawn it, it's right about 4.5. Finally, the mean is going to be the value where the histogram will balance. So you should imagine holding your finger underneath this um, histogram moving it from side to side until you find the place where it would balance on top of your finger. Um, so here, just a tiny bit less than 5. In this case, as in most cases, the mean, median, and mode are all different from one another. So why do we really need three measures of center? Why don't we just always use the mean? Well, each one of these measures of center has its own advantages and disadvantages. The mean is the most common measure of center used in statistical analysis when we're doing confidence intervals and, um, and hypothesis tests later on, we will be using the mean. For most, um, for most of us, it's also the most intuitive measure of center. Unfortunately, the mean is highly sensitive to outliers. Extreme values have a large effect on it. It can also be problematic when you're dealing with skewed distributions distributions that are not symmetric. The median is nice and simple to compute and to understand, and it's not sensitive to outliers. If you add an outlier to a set, it doesn't change the median usually um, very much. However, statistical inference is more difficult with the median. We usually don't get to it in introductory statistics. Also, the median only considers the order of the values in the set, not their relative position. So um, it's not entirely using all the information in the set when computing that measure of center. Finally, the mode is the most universal measure of center. It's even meaningful for categorical variables. However, the most common value in a data set doesn't necessarily have to be at the middle of the distribution. So the mode isn't always very reliable as a measure of center. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. A very small data set in this case, just five values. And I'm imagining these to be scores on an exam by, say, five friends. 
93, 94, 95, 94, and 19. So four people did very well, and one person did very poorly. The mean on the exam in this case is 79, but I don't think that's a good description of how well the typical student did on this exam. The typical student was in the mid-90s, when we just had one that was much lower. 79 isn't a good measure in that case. The median, 94, is much more descriptive here. One way of seeing the difference between the median and the, mo and the mean here is by taking out that outlier. If we remove the value 19, the mean changes a great deal. Now the mean is 94, but the median doesn't change at all. It's still 94. Notice, by the way, in this case, the mode of 94 isn't, uh, isn't particularly informative. It's really just a coincidence that we had two values at 94 and only one at 93, 95, and 19.